hasn't done it yet. There we go. We're live. Cool. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning online. <laughs> it's just, this is so nice. <laughs> this is just so nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that was Tom Petty uh, for all the people online. We played um, Don't Back Down. Oh, so, Don't Back Down. Don't back down. <laughs> we got gratitude, so we'll name oh, do those later. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gung, Fei, Gung Hei Fang Choi. Happy New Year. It's the year of the rabbit. Is this Chinese New Year right now? Yes. Yes, today actually oh. start of Chinese New Year. So, Gong Hei Fat Choi. So, uh, t-shirts and sweatshirts that you may or may not want to get. Uh, write a wise saying and your name will live forever. Uh, author unknown. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, easily offended people offend me. People who think they know everything are annoying to those of us that actually do. <laughs> you need that shirt. Yep. Two wrongs don't make a right. However, three rights make a left. I know. I had to, I had to talk to Janice about this one. It's like, okay, come, that doesn't quite make exact sense. So, you have to go a block further and then right, 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 and then you're going left. That's what UPS does. They, so they, they, don't they only make right turns. They don't so. have to wait for all the yep. left flights. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, careful, your ignorance is showing. Uh, the mind is like a parachute. It works better when it's open. Indeed it does. Indeed it does. And we do have a couple patron saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Yeah. George and John. And for anybody that's very young, I have no idea who those people really are. <laughs> They're saints. They're old saints. They are. They are. Yep. And uh, John said, uh, all we are saying is give peace a chance. Should be a song. Should be a song. Cindy, is there a song about that? <laughs> and George. Uh, she could wait, sing it for us. She could probably sing that for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, have you been doing any playing yeah, recently? Yeah, she has. Because oh, yeah. I never hear her. Yeah, we so. never go anywhere, so that's where we don't. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Where? Emerald. Emerald okay. Yes, I am, yeah. I know, I know. God. All right. Uh, when you think about it, attention deficit order makes a lot of sense. In this country, there isn't a lot uh, worth paying attention to. <laughs> and then George probably wrote this 30 years ago. So, so. Some things never change. change to our younger people. Some things just never change. <coughs> the Basenji is the only breed of dog that doesn't bark. Yeah, yodels. Basenji? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Somebody I thought, I thought everybody knew that. Phone. Nancy, can you get Basenji? Oh, I hear this. B E S E N J I? Slowly. Inquiring minds want to know. Don't you want to know? Yeah. He just handed it. Do you have it there? <laughs> Which breed of dog loves taking baths? Not mine. Shampoodles. <laughs> Why do cats scratch themselves? Because they're the only one that knows where that itch is. Why do you keep a dog, how do you keep a dog from smelling? Plug his nose? Yep, put a clothespin on his nose. Why can't cats fi finish watching DVDs? Oh, this is awful. They can't resist pressing the pause button. Yes. Come the A W S. Yep, yep. Do we have our Basenji yet? Well, I've got a Basenji app. <laughs> it has to do with. Uh, uh, like graphic design type stuff. I haven't seen the Basenji dog. Help oh, is coming. Help, help is, is on its way. You the it? course of true anything never does run smooth. At other times, they can sound like this. No. You want to bring it up here for the people online? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After all, this is important stuff. You've got to learn this to come to church. Here it comes. Here it comes. The Basenji. Can you do it? 
They sound like this. Or like this. At other times, they can sound like this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Especially for some of Phil's jokes. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bethany. There's only one corner of the universe you can be certain of improving, and that's your own self. Amen to that. We're going to talk about that today. No way. Yes, way. Ah. Birds of a feather will gather together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. The world is full of beauty when the heart is full of love. True. And that is true. true. Taint your whole outlook. Otherwise, everything just looks bleak. bleak. That's true any, anywhere and always, though. Um, he gives twice who gives promptly. I like that. Uh, and it, that was brand new. That was um, Plubius Cyrus in the first century BC. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, a guest sticks a nail in the wall, even if he stays but one night. Polish proverb. In other words, they make their, 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 their they, la they have Leave lasting presence. Leave their mark. Men Don't show put their a hole in my wall. <laughs> nail in my wall. Men show their character in nothing more clearly than by the way that they think what they think is laughable. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. People are very varied dense senses of humor. Yes, they do, and I have one of the oddest. <laughs> I'm kind of what can you that. say? What can you say? Uh, a grenade fell onto a kitchen floor in France, resulting in uh, linoleum blown apart. <laughs> Where's that Basenji howl? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are stuck with your debt if you can't budge it. Oh. Yeah. Local area network in Australia, the land down under. Local area network. He broke into song because he couldn't find the key. <laughs> hmm. A calendar's days are numbered. Yes. Have you, by the way, seen the calendar posts that we've been doing on the Divine Fellowship page and the group? Every single day of the year. Yeah, Beth has put them do together. She's taken some ancient ones quotes. Ancient, ancient ones are channeled group of ascended beings that I do. And she has taken some of their writings and has picked out some little morsels for us. Every day. Every day. Every single day. Start your day with something new from the, from the ancient yeah. ones. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Um, a lot of money is tainted. Taint yours, taint mine. <laughs> a boiled egg is hard to beat. Are you done yet? <laughs> yeah, could be. Could be. I'll, I'll do one more. Um, a Sunday school teacher asked a class, does anyone um, here know uh, what we mean by sins of omission? A small girl replied, aren't those the sins we should sh we should have committed but didn't? <laughs> Brings a whole new meaning to that, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> you want what? to do the gratitude? Sure. We have a box in the back uh, if you want to just give a gratitude just kind of in general. Gratitudes are really, really powerful, and gratitudes shared are even more powerful. They really are. Um, for all of the blessings in my life. There should be a song about that. Probably should. I am grateful for my loving family, including my church, family, and my daughter, daughter's miracles. Wonderful. Which means, say anything about Taylor? Oh, I should say something about, I don't know what her latest status is. Okay, so Taylor, um, Andrea's daughter, went to Arizona, visited her dad. When she came, she came down with pneumonia. And so A she, very severe, very yeah, bad bacterial bad pneumonia. So um, she had a friend who came back with her, flew back with her to help her through the airport and all that stuff. And the last I heard from her, she's feeling much better. So I don't know if she's supposed to still have that procedure or not. But Taylor, hope you're feeling better. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Now I'm done. Now you're done. Cool. All right. We'll get another cup of coffee. Because he doesn't back down. Want another down. cup of coffee? No, I'm good. Okay. Water? No. Well, just, yeah. Just mm. me gone? Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with a prayer, shall we? <clears throat> 
This one's entitled Prayer for Faith. Loving Spirit of Light. I don't know anymore. I don't know what's real from other people's expectations. I just don't know how to trust anymore. I don't know what to feel or what to believe. I'm longing for truth. I'm yearning for a knowing and a sense of assurance. Help me find my way into faith, a lasting faith, a real faith. Help me to know truth. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. And our prayer book is listed online if you'd like to take a look at that. It's on the church website, amongst many other things that we'll show you down the road. So <clears throat> today, I want to do a new process for you. Um, this has been really challenging for me because in some ways I, I kind of soft step some stuff that I'm not going to soft step today. So that's a challenge for me, and it could be a challenge for you as well. So just hang in there. Just be open and take what works for you and leave the rest. <clears throat> I want to start by having you think about what is the biggest challenge you face this year. What's the biggest challenge you face this year? And I'm going to write some of those down because we're going to work on that. And I apologize, um, I, I apologize, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> because, <clears throat> because this is so different, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. So just hang in there with me. We're going to go with the flow. We're, it's called winging it. We do that all the time here. So what's your biggest challenges? What's your biggest challenge this year? Facing fears. Picking up after myself. <laughs> so somebody already talked to her earlier today said that their biggest challenge this year was dealing with technical stuff and it wasn't me <laughs> can you see this online yeah well yeah what's your biggest challenge What else? Facing fears. Facing fears. What's your biggest fear? Challenge. <laughs> Peace in the world. Peace in the world. I'm not buying it. <laughs> That's too, you know, yeah, sure. But what is your personal challenge? What are you facing this year? You go, oh, man. What part of that? Uh, Being yeah. authentic? Family. Family. There it is. That's a good thing. <coughs> yeah, already. See what you What else? Yeah. Monetary change. Change. Mm. That's your G again. <laughs> Financial. What else? Commitment. Commitment? Ooh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Being away from home two days every week. So. I don't know how to shorten that. Yeah, let's, how about. Um, separation. Separation. That would be good. So what is it about being away from home that bothers you? Getting behind in stuff. Being separated, just disconnected? Yeah. What else? Fertility. Yeah. Fertility? Okay, that's a lot. All right. So now that we've looked at these challenges, you probably have, you, some of you are shy and couldn't possibly say sure. That's okay. Um, what I want you to do now is I want you to find a symbolic object to represent this. Okay? So technical stuff. 
That could look like a keyboard. Then that's a keyboard. What else? What about health? What? The heart. Heart for health. Okay. Uh, clearing clutter. A broom. I didn't tell you I was artistic, did I? Did I say that I was? I hope you're not expecting that. Family. <laughs> fire hose. Yeah, there you go. That's probably more accurate. Fire hose. Family. Stick people. What, what? Stick people. Stick people, of course. Stuff on his head. <laughs> what was that? Don't hang him. <laughs> Little people do. Um, change. What does that look like? Couple of rings hooked together. Yeah, if I could draw hands, that would work. Okay. But I, you know, we're just not going to challenge me that much, okay? Feeling disconnected. How about a plug in? I don't know what that would look like, but we'll pretend that's a plug in. Plugged into the wall. Pretend that's what that is. Uh, fertility. Do you want a baby? A baby? Let's do a little baby. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> Let's do What about being happy? Sometimes that's a challenge, isn't it? So let's just do a happy face for happy. Do you have a symbolic object for, for what you're considering? Okay. I want you to make sure that you have that because we're going to come back to this and talk about this some more because anything you have a challenge right here right now could have a could have a come from from your childhood a trauma attached okay could be a past life it could be a genetic memory. So whatever that is, we're going to take a different look at that. Now, caution and warning here. If you have a deep, serious trauma, you need to speak to a licensed mental health care physician or project practitioner. That's not what this is. This is a generic thing, okay? <clears throat> Although you can look at lots of stuff from a spiritual perspective. Thank you for bringing me water, whoever did. Who brought me water? Phil. Phil, Phil thank you. And this is where our song, you won't, I Won't Back Down, comes in. Because this is not easy, but I've got a visioning process for us today that will make it easier. Because here's what happens. Whenever we have a trauma or a challenge or a power play, have you ever had a power play with somebody? Whether you won or you lost, it's not fun, is it? And often when we're kids, uh, did you ever have a parent say to you, you look at me when I'm talking to you? <laughs> okay, when they do that, uh, if you're a parent, don't do that. Because if your kid's looking down, they're thinking. They're processing data. If they're looking in your eyes, they're throwing up walls. So stop doing that if you're doing it. If you're not doing that, good for you. Um, but if you've had that happen to you, when we are in a stressful moment and we look in someone's eyes, they download negativity into us and they take from us. There is an exchange of energy. They download negativity and they take something from us. <laughs> so I was thinking of this so that I can present this to you. And I realized that, you know, it could be simple. It doesn't have to be this huge, big trauma thing. But I had this friend. We, she was in my first wedding. Uh, so we were really good friends. She moved away. I moved away. La, la, la. She moved back to town. And I went to, I called her. So we, I think we got together once. 
And then I called her again and she never returned my calls. And I found out later from my mom, who was living at the time, knew her mom, and if I wasn't gonna go back to the church that we grew up in, then she couldn't be my friend anymore. And, and that hurt, that hurt. So even though there wasn't physical contact, I felt diminished by that. And it was just a little diminished. But when I looked at that, I could see that she took from me a level of open-heartedness. And she downloaded into me mistrust. So the process that I'm going to share with you today helps you identify what was taken and what was downloaded, and we exchange the energy back. We're not going to deal with the other person. We're going to deal with a symbolic object. So again, if you got your symbolic object, you're going to need that. There's so much more I want to say. <clears throat> Let me see. What do I want to... Let me share with you a couple of Bible passages that I thought were really, really cool. <clears throat> I'll start with this one. Because, I'm starting with this one, because sometimes when we have energetic power plays like this, that we can't forgive. We stay stuck. And part of why we can't forgive is because they've taken from us and we have received from them, whether unknowingly or unwillingly, and until that gets cleared, it's really hard. I had this one friend and she, she had something bad happen to her. <clears throat> and the person actually said they apologized. And she couldn't forgive them because it didn't feel sincere. It wasn't about their apology. Even if you get an apology, that isn't what your soul really needs. This process will help us let go. I don't need your apology. I need to be well. I need to be healed. I need my inner being healed, right? <clears throat> and sometimes there's a disruption between people and the person dies, and we're still stuck with this ick. It's time to clear all that stuff out. And here's part of why. Because sometimes when we have negative feelings about another person, we don't want to have negative feelings, but they're there because we're human. It is divine to forgive. It is human to hold a grudge. So it's just, don't, no blame, no shame on that. But let's just look, do it differently. Okay, let's find a different way to do it. Verse 17 of Proverbs 24, 17 and 18. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls. Ha, they deserve that. Okay, so. We all do that, don't we? And do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Here's why. Lest the Lord see it and be displeased, and he turn away his anger from him. It's time for us to get out of God's way. Stop holding grudges. Stop being angry. Stop being hurt. Let's get clear. Let's get free. All right? It's time. Because God can't do God's work in their life if we're hanging on to the pain. But that's it. <laughs> and my innermost being will rejoice when your my innermost being will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. When we speak this truth to ourselves, and we're going to get to a deeper truth here. When we get to that truth and we speak it, our inner being will rejoice. We'll be free. How wonderful will that be? One more. Where are you? There you are. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts of his being. So we don't go in this alone. We've got divine source to help us here. And the part of the divine source help here is the fact that we're using symbolic objects, symbolic meanings here. Because symbolism is a language of spirit. Symbolism gets out of our head, gets out of our emotions, and gets to the truth of it, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do and then we're gonna do it, all ready? So we're gonna take ourselves on a little walk and we're gonna go up to a high mountain peak and we're gonna see a valley below us 
At the far end of the valley, you're going to put your symbolic object. Everybody got your symbolic? Anybody need help with their symbolic object? Anybody need help with that? I can help. Yeah? Mine is trust. Trust. Okay, so what, sim what would symbolize trust? <laughs> okay, you know, you, maybe it's uh, scales, balance. Oh, balance. Okay. Yeah. Giving and taking an equal measure, balance. Okay, does that work? Anybody else need, have help, need help? Okay, so, <clears throat> and then we're gonna put that symbolic object there. I don't care who's involved with that, we don't care. That symbolic object is gonna be at the far end of the, the valley. Because you know, sometimes people irritate the heck out of us and I don't want to get involved. I don't want to even acknowledge them. That's fine. So <clears throat> then when we're standing at the top of the peak, we're going to say, I hereby release. Did I write it down? Oh, I hereby reclaim what is rightfully mine. Now, think about this mistrust that you have, let's say. What What did they take? What did that situation take from you that created that mistrust? Okay, so they downloaded mistrust to you. That's something that's not yours, it's downloaded to you. So what could you reclaim? What could you reclaim? Your own power. But what flavor of power would that be? That would be the, able to, the ability to discern who you can trust. Not everybody's trustworthy. So discernment. So I hereby release mistrust, and I hereby reclaim discernment. See how that works? Okay, so what will we do for tech stuff? I hereby release feeling overwhelmed, and I reclaim my ability to see clearly, or I reclaim my ability to understand. Does that feel right? Okay, uh, health, health. I hereby release discomfort. What do we want to claim in return? Vitality. Because when we have that vital energy, we heal ourselves, right? We have access to healing energy. So vitality. I hereby release unhealthiness, and I hereby reclaim vitality. What about clearing clutter? I hereby release clutter. What what might you want to come back? Peace, space, organization. You choose. I hereby release clutter and I hereby reclaim. Both happen at the same time. What about family? <clears throat> That's a tricky one. How about I hereby release responsibility? Because especially if our kids are grown, we're not, we don't, we're not responsible for them. We care, but we're not responsible for them. <clears throat> so what could we reclaim instead? Peace. Peace. Or knowing that, how can we say this? So knowing that we have a powerful influence by just being true to ourselves. So we can reclaim that powerful influence and let go of responsibility, duty, obligation, expectations of trying to fix them, all that stuff. Make sense? Change. You know, there's, the world is changing. There's new houses growing up us, around our house all the time, and you know, we used to live way out in the country. We don't live in the country anymore. Just change is everywhere. We, Phil and I were talking about that earlier. <clears throat> so what about change? Can we release and what can we receive back? What does change steal from us? Security. Security. I hereby release distress from change and reclaim stability. Because no matter what's going on in the world, I can be okay. Uh, finances. Financial difficulties. Same thing. Insecurity, isn't it? <laughs> Insecurity and stability. And when we have that stability, we'll be able to make good choices and be able to bring a better flow of abundance to ourselves. Um, commitment. Biggest challenge is commitment. 
Okay, so the challenge for commitment is being there. Dedication, signing up, being true. And the, the challenge for that is being able to be myself at the same time. So I hereby release fear, so it's really a fear thing, and I reclaim my ability to be true to myself. That work? Disconnected. What are we letting go of? Relationships. Say what? Relationships. Loneliness. Let's say loneliness. So we're going to discharge or release loneliness and we're going to reconnect with connectedness because we're connected to spirit and even though we're separate from our family that doesn't separate us from the love that is there so reconnecting into that love that makes sense that work fertility fear and it doesn't matter if this is genetic or if this is past life stuff or if it's this life stuff it doesn't matter so why don't we let go of productivity let go of it's not good enough and instead we'll claim what do we want to claim back joy, joy power acceptance freedom productivity make sense so whatever yours is, so you got you are, you're going to be on the mountain, and the other thing is the symbolic object is there. We're going to do this exchange, and you're going to see energy beams of light from divine source coming down to surround you first. Then we're going to say what we're going to say. I'll walk you through that. Then you're going to see this energy you no longer want to, want to carry being transmitted back to that symbolic object. It could be a color. Could be just a vibration, could be a feeling, whatever. Just allow that to flow, going all the way to that symbolic object. And then you're going to see energy coming back to you. And it can come back into your heart space, can come back into your mind, come back into your guts, come back into your whole being. Maybe it'll come back into your energy field first and then be absorbed into your whole body. However that works for you is what's right for you. There's no wrong way to do this. Okay? So, Mr. Phil, if you would dim the lights, please, sir. And let's take a little minute to ground, center, balance, and get into that meditative state. So bring your attention now to your heart space, the, the whole chest area of your body. And just be there for a second. And with your awareness here, allow your heart space to relax, open, be peaceful. And from your heart space, allow your awareness now to travel up into the top of your head. There's an energy portal right on the top of your head. This is always open, it's always connected to spirit, but with our attention, it will expand. So this will open up more, and the connection between you and your higher power, higher source, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, whatever that is for you, is going to strengthen. And you will tap into this beautiful energy from divine source that will flow down into the top of your head. Perhaps you'll perceive it as a color. Perhaps you'll perceive it as warmth. Perhaps you'll just feel it as energy. However you feel it is however is right for you. And let that touch your mind, your perceptions, your third eye, your eyes. Let it touch your ears, your mouth, your throat. This is your truth circuit so that you can speak your truth. And even if somebody else's truth is not in harmony with your truth, it could just be. And your truth is still true for you, letting more and more of this living light of love flow into your heart space. And from your heart space, 
out into your arms, down your torso, down your legs, into your feet, and out into your energy field that surrounds your body. You are bathed in this living light of love. You are protected in this living light of love. And your ability to do spiritual work is amplified in this living light of love. And now allow yourself to take a little walk. And you're going to find yourself walking up a steep mountaintop. But it's effortless. And with just a few steps, you find yourself all the way to the top. And from here, you can see way out beyond the mountain, the Sea of Valley. And way at the other end of the valley, put that symbolic object that you've created for yourself. Feel yourself surrounded by divine light and that divine light within you, empowering you and assisting you. And say to yourself silently, I hereby release whatever it is that you need to release. And I hereby reclaim whatever it is that you need to reclaim. And see that beam of light pulling from you stuff you no longer need to carry. And see this beautiful living light of love flowing from that symbolic object back to you to help you feel full, recharged, revitalized, rejuvenated. Notice if it's a color not if it's, if it's just light, if it's just a feeling. And when you've taken all that you can receive for this moment in time, the energies will stop. And just stand here in this light Feeling that power in your innermost being. Feeling healing happening to your innermost being. You're reintegrating something really profound for yourself. Take it on. Take it on. And now say to yourself, I am. Repeat that to yourself. I am. One more time. I am. And now allow yourself to walk back down that mountaintop, back into this time and space, back into the here and now, feeling empowered, reconnected. Join us in prayer, please. Loving spirit of light, as we take this in, we take a minute to remember Jesus that it is through him that we are empowered to claim our life with fullness and with joy. Walk with us, bless us, and guide us. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Amen. Join us in prayer, please. <clears throat> Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it. Even the challenging things, <clears throat> help us to learn from them. Empower us in our everyday life to live more fully, more freely. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, the Ascended One. Amen. Almost as good as coffee. <laughs> yeah, let me look. Yes, that was probably sacrilegious, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs>